Hello, my name is Ray Gardaki, and I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon from Nashville, Tennessee. Today, I wanted to talk to you about an interesting case of thoracic disc herniation treated through a transforaminal endoscopic approach. The patient in question is a 68-year-old former nurse with multiple comorbidities, including congestive heart failure and osteoporosis. Thoracic disc herniations are challenging surgical problems that traditionally require extensive resources to treat surgically and come with significant morbidity. The transferamal endoscopic approach has the potential to cause a paradigm shift in the treatment of this pathology. It is the penultimate example of widening the complexity invasiveness gap. The transferamal endoscopic approach lends itself to this pathology since it is basically an approach directly to the ventral spinal canal, ventral to both the spinal cord and dura. Indications for the surgery include thoracic myelopathy, thoracic radiculopathy, or intractable pain due to spinal cord compression. Thoracic disc herniations have traditionally been treated with benign neglect until the symptoms are so severe that the morbidity of an open surgery is warranted. The transferamal endoscopic approach converts this into a procedure performed through an 8 millimeter incision under sedation, which can be safely performed on an outpatient basis without the need for instrumentation, fusion, or even narcotics postoperatively. This patient has thoracic myelopathy due to calcified central to right-sided T7-8 disc herniation impinging upon the spinal cord. Note that this patient is osteoporotic and has a previous compression fracture in a lower thoracic spine, which means she is not a great candidate for instrumented fusion. The treatment will be a right T7-8 transpedicular endoscopic thoracic discectomy. The trajectory to approach the thoracic foramen is typically localized on the AP fluoroscopy, counting up from the last rib-bearing vertebra. Pre-op standing scoliosis x-rays, as well as thoracolumbar CT scan, are correlated to the MRI imaging to confirm the appropriate level and rule out calcification of the thoracic disc herniation, which occurs in approximately 42% of these herniations. Insertion of the needle into the foramen will determine if there is adequate space for the endoscope. When performing a transforamal endoscopic discectomy, changing the trajectory to the foramen based upon the location of the herniation is an important variation that can make these cases quicker, easier, and safer. Postoperative imaging reveals complete resection of the calcified fragment on the CT scan, and the MRI shows restoration of CSF around the spinal cord without compression. The postoperative protocol for this patient is 15 days of Tylenol, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, a muscle relaxer, and low-dose gabapentin prescribed postoperatively. Patients are allowed to return to activity as tolerated 72 hours postoperatively. The wound is closed with skin glue, so the patients are allowed to shower the day of surgery. In summary, the benefits of this approach in the surgical treatment of thoracic disc herniation include decreased morbidity, fewer complications, less need for hardware or fusion, quicker recovery, and decreased costs to the patient, the payer, and society.